anyway, um, so when he, you know, come back, we need him. Oh, sorry. So anyway, uh, one of the things that my father did was reconnaissance. He would take on missions, and you would get extra pay if you would fly missions over Vietnam, North Korea, whatever, whatever was needed. You got extra pay for that. So those things happen. Well, when you fly reconnaissance, you're working with the CIA because that's intelligence. So this family, the Chu's, became very friendly with us. Mr. Chu worked for Cat Airlines, which is civil air transport, which is a cover for the CIA. Mrs. Chu was born in 1921 in China. She came from a very wealthy family. When Mao Zedong came in at that same time, his regime came in at that same time and took everything from her family. She met Mr. Chu, they married, they found, they got off the island of China, I mean the, the, the country of China, and went to the island of Taiwan. When I knew her, they were living on Okinawa. Like I said, my father and her husband worked together. I went to high school with her daughter. She had one son that was in school in the United States. And this was her story of, and I did this with her in color, but the, the black and white um, you know, flowers and then the writing. I don't know what this says in Chinese. I just copied Chinese letter. But I wrote in my European style handwriting um, about, about her. So this is another, and this is just done regular. This is regular painted. Um, regular style watercolor. This is uh, the last story that I have that's outside. I started adding these stories because I had the, the military series, but in that military series, these people were also part of it. So this is Marie. When we lived in Brussels, my father was with the embassy, and we lived like royalty, sort of, and I even met royalty. So um, any of you watch The Crown? So do you know about Queen Elizabeth's sister, Margaret? OK, so do you remember the, 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 the big brouhaha with her and Peter Townsend? Well, he was sent to Brussels to, to be away from her, right? And he worked with my dad. Actually, one day, she was, she was sneaking to Brussels and having rendezvous with him, because I ran into her one day. And she was in Jodfers, and I had never seen a lady in Jodfers before. Anyway, and she was quite taken with my little brother. But there was a lady in our building named Marie, and she was the um, mistress to a very wealthy Belgian industrialite. In Europe, it's not a big deal to have a mistress, especially if you're, you know, a big shot. So, um, but Marie's story is she lived through World War II as a young girl and as a teenager. And things happened to her, and, um, and I think that changed her attitude about herself. And um, anyway, she was so much fun. She, she lived very well because her guy took really good care of her. But, um, and my parents talked her into leaving him. When we left, she left him. And um, it, was a, it was a beautiful time that we had. She allowed, she babysat us. We would go to her house to be babysat, and her, her maid would actually cook us like four course meals. <laughs> so anyway, it was a great, great story. But this is a lady that had survived Nazi um, problems. And her father was high up in the um, French military, but it didn't help her. OK, so here's the gesso juice. And I'm going to go through some of these um, photos of my military series. OK, recents. So this is one of the cards that you have. This is um, a guy that uh, uh, was too young for World War II, and he got in at the end, and he helped, if you see, the um, the Arizona Memorial at the bottom of that in, in the corner. Uh, he helped clean up Pearl Harbor. They had cleaned up as much as they could during the war, but he went in for a final cleanup. These are kids um, at an honor flight. I don't, are you, any of you familiar with the honor flights? 
So if you have anybody right now, the people that are eligible for the honor flights are um, Korean War veterans, because almost the World War II veterans are all gone. Um, a Korean War veterans and um, Vietnam veterans. And I have to tell you, most of the Vietnam veterans have seen their memorial to war in Washington, D.C. The reason they started these honor flights is because the Vietnam War Memorial, um, cre the government decided that they needed more memorials. If they were going to honor Vietnam, they would have to go back and honor Korea and World War II. So, but the one thing they, the Vietnam veterans never got was a welcome home. And that they will get if they go on an honor flight. So I encourage you, if you know anyone, please encourage them to, a, it's free. It's a long day. It's 4.30 in the morning till 8 o'clock that night. But every, they all come home with a lot of um, auxiliary. And I learned this because my paintings are at the airport. And the airport people have told me to encourage you all. This is my cousin. Uh, um, you know, my father was a Phillips. And this is Jake Phillips. This is him when he gets into the military. He's 17 years old. His parents have to sign him in. And um, today he is an officer. And uh, I was hoping that he would be able to come. Uh, but he is uh, an aide to an admiral now. He's a lieutenant commander. And um, anyway, he, and he is a, a combat veteran as well. This is my dad in um, the Korean War era, World um, Cold War era. That's an F-84. My father would be in the first um, uh, um, air shows before they started the Thunderbirds. Right, any of you watch the military air shows? OK, so they, the Navy, um, the, the Navy uh, guys and the Marines and the Air Force have different, different air shows. He was in the preliminary ones in 1953. They had these preliminary air shows. <clears throat> this is the, actually the first painting of the series, and it's in tribute to husband's service in Vietnam in 1968. I have the flag. I have a photo that he took, uh, and that's and there. And I used the the blue and white stars as the background, and then the letter, which talks about you know the people that are apparently a a, a group of girls in a high school had sent that Vietnam platoon uh, goodies for Christmas, cookies and other things to decorate with. And um, they were out in the, in the field, and they decorated their tent. And that's the, the painting I did of him. I actually hid it from him. I would work on it a little bit and, <laughs> and then turn it around so he wouldn't see it. That's him with his M16. This, you, some of you have the card. This is Alexander Jefferson. Um, he was World War II Tuskegee Airman. He was in the camp with my dad. And I did him, if you see that, with him and those kids. So these are all stories. These paintings all are stories. You see a lot of artists that are painting soldiers, but they're just painting the, the face of a soldier. And he was in Iraq. And that's all you really know. You know, you don't get the whole, how is this involved in, into history? How does this weave in? All these wars are connected. You don't stop and start. They just keep on going because things happen. So Alexander Jeffrey was a Skiggy airman, and he ended up in the POW camp. My father was shot down during World War II, and he was um, in the POW camp in Germany. Alexander Jefferson was there too, but you never heard that story. And probably all of you may have seen the movie The Great Escape. You may have watched Hogan's Heroes. All those were based on that same POW camp, Stalag Luft Three. But you never heard that story. So I had to do that painting of him. When he came back, they weren't interested in him flying. So he went back up to Detroit and became a school teacher. And I did his painting with the school kids. I took that photo of him in, in uh, Washington, DC at the World War II Memorial. All those kids saw him, and they, they just wanted their picture with him. This was a tribute to the current wars that are going on in well, I'm not sure what's going on in Afghanistan. But this was uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. And this was my cousin who was a CPA. And he signed up for the reserves for extra money. And he got called up. And this is him. And I did this in an impressionist style with a flat brush. 
because it's easy to do that, um, you know, the uh, camouflage uniforms that way. This is another one of him. This was the one I was commissioned to do for the USS Fort Lauderdale. And um, that's Captain James Placermo. And I came to him and I said, oh, you must be of Italian descent because your name ends with an O. I said, I mean, which is a, a vowel, because all the Italian names ends with vowel. And he says, I have all the vowels in my name. <laughs> so, okay, well, I'm going to go and skip now to this. Whoops. So this is called mix. And all the rest of these are involved with this. So I found that, let me go back to what it looks like. So if you, you see that mix, M-I-X, if I hit it, it says, um, it, it's actually for photographers, but I used this to get the, the, all these paintings that are in front of you right now. And we're going to go to another album here. All right. So this is a photo that I took in uh, Fort Lauderdale. And I thought it was a good photo. And I, I thought, how am I going to paint that? It came out looking gray with the green in the background. And I thought, I just don't know how I'm going to approach it. I like it, but I don't know how I'm going to approach it. Well, can you see it here? All right, so then I ran it through a filter. So if you go to mix, you can run it through filters and you get different ideas. Now, I can't paint it like that. Maybe you can figure it out, but I didn't. So, and then that was another filter that, I, that was an option. I combined, I took out the one pelican and um, painted it as you see it. Can everybody see the, I think I have a photo of it. Yep, here it is. So that's how I painted it. And I used um, the, the leaves. I'm going to uh, demo that kind of a little later. And then there is this photo that I took of my I was with my grandson, and he was playing baseball. And I just love this boy is looking with, not out looking at me. The one is looking down, and the one is looking in the hat. And I just love that composition. Plus, it's got a, a, you know, a diagonal. So ran that through the filter. And then I got this painting. Doesn't have the whole, all right, well. So you can see the real painting. That's, this is just a portion of the painting here. But that's, that's how I painted it. Then you see this one here. And I was with my grandchildren. And we were coming back from Miami. It was at night. It was late at night. We had been to a, a show um, of something or other in, in South Miami. And I just saw, I, I saw that. And I was sitting in the front seat of the car. And I just grabbed my iPhone and took that photo. And again, I loved it. I loved that back of that car. I loved the composition. Ran that through the filter. And there was another filter. And I debated on which one to use. But I ended up using this one. And, whoops. And, of course, that's the painting called Midnight Magic in Miami. Then I have this photo of my granddaughter. This was a few years ago. And this was a children's museum, um, Young at Art, it's called. And I love this angle, the diagonal with all the lines and Ran that through the filter and came up with the painting that you see over there. So these are just ways, and I, and I thought I started pulling out all my children's photos because I thought these bright colors <clears throat> were a great way <clears throat> to accent that. Yep. 
Yep. And I didn't even pay for it. I just got the free version. I, I don't think so. Uh-uh. Yeah. And then there's a, a, a so I'm going to, this is a, a photo that I took, we, my husband and I traveled this year in Sweden. And this was a photo that I took from a double-decker bus. Where I, so I was getting a bird's eye view. And I love the composition of this as well. I love stoplights and this has that in it and people. And then I ran this, I'm going to show you several filters this time. So I actually ran it through this one, which posterizes it. Now, this is a very popular thing, and I don't paint posterize, but I use it to help me see what I want to paint the way I want to paint it. I'm going to bring those lights, almost a white there in the middle, and then those buildings. You know, I get ideas from posterizing. There's, there's one of the mix um, filters. Here's another, this is that yellow filter that I use, have used quite a bit. And there's, there's what the app looks like mix. So I haven't done that one yet. And let's see, what else do I have here? Excuse me? There's the mix. You're welcome. All right, so I think that's all I wanted to cover in the photos. Yes. Okay. So, oh, here's a few more paintings with gesso juice. Again, I, I like this for pelicans because pelicans are birds that get really beat up. You know, they, they, a lot of them end up um, with bad cataracts and they're blinded because they have to dive for their food. Uh, they end up getting caught in um, fishing lines, sometimes losing a foot. They end up losing feathers for all kinds of reasons because they hang out at the docks while, while people are fishing. There's another one. Um, I didn't take this one out of it, but you get the idea. It's, you know, I love the, the different angles that are used. And again, I'm, I write on, on the story. It's the story of the day that I went to, to take these photographs. These are all taken at um, Flamingo Gardens in uh, the Fort Lauderdale area. And um, this is my latest pelican that I did in, in using that filter of the yellow. And what I've also used here, I, if, can you see it? Okay, so that spraying is not done with a um, toothbrush. It's done with this. So, um, and if you look, like I was trying to, so I posterize it, but then I got to figure out, I love figuring these things out. I love, like, mysteries and puzzles and I like to figure out I like to untangle like if you have a yarn or a string that's all tangled I want to I want to untangle it that's just my personality <laughs> okay so the, the there's don't buy the cheap one if you really like this this is like the $30 and I think they're even more expensive now because I got mine a few years ago so it's just two pipes and they're soldered and so you put your color, you mix your color in like a little pill bottle, um, and then you put this in and you blow. It's mouth atomizer. Atomizer. And you blow, and you actually create just a, that whole effect, that blow. And you can create, and see how I created on this one? So those, um, the lights of the city, and I, you can do an underpainting and then blow on top of it. And I blow masking fluid, but I don't use regular masking fluid. I took a, a workshop with a fella, and he and, uh, talked me into using this mold builder. It's cheap. Mold builder. It comes in a jar about this high and this round. It's pure latex. Masking fluid is mostly latex, and this has nothing in it, and I, and I thin it with just water. 
masking? Oh, mold, M-O-L-D. Like you're ma gonna make a mold, and you can buy it in craft stores like Michael's, and then you just thin it down. Keep it in a dark, dry place. Don't leave it out on a counter where you have a lot of sunlight. Uh, it'll last for years if you do that. And then you just put it in here and you blow. And I blow, I practice first. And this takes a little practice. And even before I blow, I will go practice somewhere else before, usually in my sink. Because <laughs> it's easy to clean up. And then I go and blow on the... Okay, when I blow this with frisket, I immediately rinse it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I leave it on until I'm ready to wipe out the white. Yes, yes, and I'm going to show you today. So, um, so I started this, and I blew that frisket on here. And, and so in this painting of the bird with the dark blue background, if you're going to do a dark background like that, do not use uh, paint that's been put into your, um, uh, you know, the paint holder and your, your uh, and use this paint directly out of the tube. So just before I started, I took, this is indigo, and I put two dollops of it in here. I'm going to add a little water. So it's really, really thick. If you want to cover an area really, really thick, like those birds, and you may have to go back in and do it twice, but you get a, a real dark. Nope. And that's how I did that bird. Now I'm going to soften these edges around. But to get those nice thick backgrounds, use it straight. And I learned this from a, um, a guy that was a professional illustrator. So he always said, See, save some tubes. With paint in them instead of putting it all out on your. Now, can you see some of the I can see some of the white specks, now that I've got this dark, I can't see it so much in the light. And I can still lift in here. And I have to tell you, I mask a lot with just masking tape. Um, but you can't, once you've painted and you, you put masking tape on, it's, it's only good for when it's fresh paper. But um, I did this hole with just masking tape. And I, I'm going to show you on here how I did the flor floral around that bird. So I, this is just, I put paint on it. I put, um, you know, cling wrap and then let it dry. So I got those shapes. I'm going to paint around here. And this is how. Are we going to need more?
just a little water. I want it really um, a lot of pigment to very little water. I did. So that's how I got some interesting shapes in, inside those. And you can see I'm going back because that was pretty diluted. And I'm going to have to go get into another brush to, to cut into these shapes. I already drew the shapes of the leaves that I wanted. But if you look at those shapes, I actually looked at the reference and just picked some of the reference to use. It takes a lot of paint, but the, um, the results are really good. cut in here. But using the cling wrap, I got some interesting shapes inside the leaves so they're not all just solid and boring. Because after all, you saw the, um, the, the, uh, the way it looked in the filter. And I even allowed, you know, left some of the white. Inside those leaves as well, because that punches. All right, so you see that that's how I got those leaves with the. Um, with that and now I'm just going to take this. It's probably, I don't know if you can see, but some of these dots are already, this will brighten the pickup. It just picks up all the They're selling them <laughs> in the trade show. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off of here and here. Because I want a straight line. And I can get a straight line with the tape very easily. was afraid some of this wasn't dry. But anyway, so you would get these little tiny pieces of white. Anyway, so you see what I did on this painting with the night scene. And I didn't make the, the, the sky that dark. I could have made it darker, but in the city, the sky isn't that dark, because especially Miami. <laughs> 
got a lot of light. So let's see if I can get some of that off. It's indigo, so probably not. But anyway, I would have allowed that to dry a lot more. Anyway, you can start to see the, see? The bits of light. So you don't remove the masking until you're all done and of course it's dry so you wouldn't have that happen. <laughs> anyway, so you can see how that um, just really needs, I, it's still too wet in there. Let's see if I can go. And then of course painting the Oh. Anyway, these are just to give you the idea of how it's done. And I have still gesso juice to do. So the gesso juice, you, you can't really, well, you could, I guess. Put it, this is an old, old, as you can tell, um, gator board. And this is a half of an old painting that didn't go anywhere. So I like to put the gesso juice over something like this because some of this color comes through. Now I'm going to pour this. Um, I have the recipe here if you have never done it before. And I apply it with, with a credit card because I want those lines. It, yes, the lines that it leaves. So you pour this. And this is the consistency uh, that you want. It's right, it's right here, so if somebody wants to come pick those up and pass them out. And you have to let this dry at least a day. So if it's 300 paper, maybe two days. Now, once you do this once, you can still go over it again if you decide you want more coverage. And I did a painting one time where I actually, and sometimes I do this, I know what I'm going to put on it, and I kind of make the lines where I want them because I create this. Now, when you do this, watercolor is, is going to stand sit on top of this. It doesn't go into the paper. So it, it, you're painting with a lot of very thick paint out of your palette. But it, it does some great, you know, it'll bloom easily because it's sitting on top of your paper. It's not going into the paper. And I keep it in a jar. And if you keep it in a cool, dark place, I have a cabinet right next to my, I keep everything in there because everything will hold up better. If I leave it on my desk, which is, has a window, a lot of strong light comes in there, all that stuff dries up or gets mold or whatever. So you can do anything you want. I had a painting one time where a guy was holding his bird, and I did this to, to get the feeling of the guy with the bird, to create that energy of him and his love for his bird. And he was a really tough guy. He was a uh, you know, a, he rode a motorcycle, and he was a tough character, but his love for that bird, it just, and, and that painting sold. Somebody felt, you know, that, that love that he had for that, that bird. 
Okay, no, not totally. Okay, so I brought you one. Let me move this. And then don't use a current credit card like this is an old, <laughs> an old key. So this is what it looks like. Now that's one coat. If I don't like it, I can go back and put more gesso juice on it. But again, I'm not going to do it here because transporting these when they're wet is a pain. So um, I, I will put more gesso juice. Like when I did my uh, grandmother painting back here, um, I went back because I realized that her I wanted that completely. I didn't so much over here, because this is the sister that never came to the United States and actually probably died during World War II from the Russians. They were killed. There was a lot of things that went on, and they blamed the Russians blamed it on the Nazis until the, the end of the Cold War when they found out it was the Russians. So I ended up going back and putting more gesso to whiten. But I love the, this is, these are colors that came through. And the painting that's underneath has a lot of greens in it, which I left on those corners. And um, anyway, that, that, yes. Yeah, so the, uh, these are two sisters in 1903. One came to America 10 years later. The other would not survive World War II. The one that came to America was my grandmother. The other, I would never know. Yeah. No, just watercolor. And do you see how you get the blooms? And, and that's just really, with a lot of water, it'll bloom really great because it's sitting on top. It's not going into the paper. So you can get all those cool effects. Yes. Yes, yes. So those, mm -hmm. no. If it's, this is over 100 years old, so 1903. Yes, yes. Oh, no, the gesso part, I, I put it all over. And, and I don't just compete here in Florida, I compete all over. And the gesso is fine. It wasn't my idea. It's called, I call it, um, I think I give credit on there to Kathleen O'Connor. Uh, it's her recipe. And I took a workshop with her. And uh, she goes all over. In fact, I was really surprised because she recently judged Transparent Watercolor Society. I don't think she did it with, the, with one of these, but she became famous for this. And I took her workshop, and you know I, I used it my way, but um, it's it I love it. It's fun to uh, you know play with. Right, I love the effect of this. Look at this line. I couldn't get this any other way, and it's and it's not heavy. I mean, this is just on uh, you know one forty pound paper. I do have it on some. You know, 300 pounds, it just depends on what paintings didn't work. <laughs> and actually, you can see uh, the painting that's underneath. If you hold it up to the light, I don't know if you can here or not. A little bit. You can see the underneath painting. I don't even know if you can see it through this one. Maybe not. Well, this acrylic, a gesso, and this is a mixture of gesso. Now, I use a very liquidy gesso. So Liquitex has, you don't want the full body gesso that's like paste. You want something, actually the cheaper gessos are better for this. 
Yes, yes. And um, the, the brand from Blick, that's a great one too. But if it's too thick, it's not good. And sometimes you do have to, you know, play with it. But this is like really thick cream is the, the consistency that you want to get. And then you can like spatter, um, you know, with it too. So you can do that. I didn't do it here, but, you know. And then you get those drops. This will still move for a while. I mean, I could play with this for a while. Oh, okay. I would wait at least two days. Yeah. No, you can't. It, you're, no. You're just killing, because you, you're going to mess up your brushes. You're going to get acrylic into them. It's, you don't get anything. I mean, and then this doesn't come off, so what would be the point? Unless you wanted to do the painting, and then at the end, if you wanted to sprinkle this white on it, plus I don't know how well it would go through this, because it's thick. So it's, it's, it's a mouth atomizer. Well, you could, you, after this is dry and you want to do your paint, um, I mean, I don't know. You can try it. Try it and play with it. See if that works. Yes? I've tried that. It, I, it, it moves. It depends. I would have to get it like right at the right moment because I've done that and I pull it up because I thought I would get like, I thought leaves would be cool, you know, and to lay fresh leaves in there. But then when I pull it up, it just all, psh. so I, I think that you would have to like, it would have to be right at the moment that, <laughs> and then the two days period of time, I'm not sure. <laughs> You're welcome to try it. It just kind of all, I, I thought of that too. That didn't work. Well, the problem is this is acrylic, so Saran is going to become part of the painting. No, I mean, you got to pull it off at a certain period in time. So unless you wanted to put it on and see, but once it's dry, the Saran wrap's not coming off. Yes. 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 And that's and that's a trick. Um, John Salmonin, I've studied a couple times with him, and he uses that when he makes a mistake, and he wants fresh canvas. And you can take and paint with gesso, and you got fresh canvas again. Yeah. Yeah. So you can use that then, you know, to get, you know your fresh paper back. Yes. I mean, this has, I, I, all of these paintings are different. Oh, these are regular paintings. Yeah. I, and I may, correct, correct. I don't do any of these with, with the gesso. You know, but it depends on the mood I'm in and what I'm trying to get across. And yes. Well, th these. That, that's on top of gesso juice. That's on top of gesso juice. This is on top of gesso juice. These are all gesso juice paintings. So do you see all those lines? And the depth is different just because of the way I was moving the, the card? All of these lines, that's all from the gesso juice. On this one, um, pelican, a large bird, footed bird with an uh, a expandable pouch under the lower bill used for catching and 
um, holding fish. A wonderful bird is the pelican. His bill will hold more than his belly can. <laughs> he can take in his what, beak food enough for a week, but I'm damned if I see, have, um, I can't read the rest of it. Yeah, I think you're right. So, and then this is, um, you know, birds, you know, just something that sometimes I write about when I went out to, 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 to paint them, what was going on, where I took the pic picture. Again, the Asian influence of why can't I write on my paintings if they can? A pen and a nip. The old-fashioned, because that's the way I learned in Europe. So with an inkwell, I just I use watercolor. And I take a brush, and I go into the watercolor, and I put it on the pen on both front and back. I tap it, and then I write. And I got to keep filling it back up. So yeah, it's a process. OK, any more questions? I have some more of my soldier stories. Yes. Although, I have a painting that was in one year where I actually, OK, so I did this painting with a light background and three pelicans. And I decided to do it with a dark background and the same three pelicans. So I kind of knew where I was going with it. And I took um, um, masking fluid. And I wrote with the masking fluid. And then when I pulled it up, you know, the paint, the writing was in white. So, yeah. So that, you know, that was a, that was a, uh, I, but I, I'm like, I love problem solving. And so my art is really my problem, my, <laughs> my ability to solve problems. It keeps me busy. And I keep wanting to solve, make up problems and solve them. <laughs> You're talking about this? Oh, by his neck. Yeah, that, that's, I, I, I just, you know, used a, a hot red color and. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much.